so i was reviewing the past two weeks interview feedback forms and uh, actually i find one pattern where uh, where the most of the interviewers are focusing on the lwc and integration questions so i i am thinking of creating one video around the integration video integration question answers scenario and uh, that video will be in the three parts first i'll be covering nearly 20 25 questions around uh, the salesforce integration theoretical question basically and then uh, i'll be jumping towards the scenario based question also uh, means i am able to uh, i am able to find uh, the data that uh, interviewer are not only just expecting the theoretical questions right now they will ask you about the uh, about the scenarios that you faced so the third video that i am going to create is about scenario means you faced in the integration so that means eventually we all know that ki everyone is faced different scenarios or different situation in the integration but interviewer are knowingly interested into the into the scenarios that you faced so how do how do you answer that question also that also i am uh, uh, i am covering into a third video so stay tuned so the first integration question is obviously what is the integration context in salesforce so basically in salesforce uh, the integration means whenever we are connecting salesforce with the external system we refer it as an integration now there are there are different different uh, different different uh, business requirements where we uh, where we actually involve integration uh, the requirements like syncing a customer data order details then service history across the platform etc etc so uh, there are multiple use case of the integrations also depending on the project next is what are the web services and how do they facilitate the integration so basically web services are the standardized way of communicating between the application or the web they actually allow different system to exchange the data regardless of the underlying technology and uh, uh, actually salesforce it supports web uh, web services like uh, soap and rest api and by using different different methods like get post put we actually use uh, use the web services to integrate the external system with the salesforce next question is different between json and xml so basically uh, json and xml are two uh, two file formats uh, used in the, into a integration if we compare the json and xml uh, we can say that json has a lightweight and readable format compared to the xml which is a tag based format if we compare the syntax of json uh, json actually uses a key value pair and on the other hand xml uses the opening and closing tags like html if we compare the speed and uh, capabilities uh, json is a faster to parse compared to the xml if we talk about the readability json is easier to understand for humans and uh, if we talk about xml it has a more structural approach if we talk about the uh, usage of json json is used in uh, mostly in the rest api integration and uh, xml is very commonly used in to a soap api integration now next question is what is the rest api and when uh, when should it be used so basically rest api stands for representational state transfer that that is it is a lightweight api uh, lightweight web service protocol which use http methods like get post uh, put and delete uh, when we are going to use the rest api uh, if we have a stateless communication then we can use the use the uh, rest api it supports the faster communication compared to the soap also uh if uh, we are preferring working with the json over the xml then also we will prefer a rest api uh if we are we are actually integrating the mobile apps or the web 
apps then also we are uh, we are using the rest api over the uh, over the soap okay now what is the soap and how does it differ from the rest so soap api is a protocol based uh, uh, based on xml uh, it actually uh, transfer the messages over http and https uh, we actually use a strongly typed contract like wsdl uh, into our soap api and uh, we are dealing with the legacy systems if there are enterprise system already using the used then we we prefer using the soap api now uh, interviewer will definitely ask us about soap and rest api difference between so if we compare rest and soap api we can see that uh, say that the uh, rest use http protocol and uh, soap uh, use uh, http s and http then if we talk about the formats rest api supports the uh, json format and soap api is mostly prefer preferring a xml over a json uh, if we talk about the speed, REST API is faster and lightweight compared to a SOAP API, which is slower and more secure than the REST. If we talk about the security, the auth uh, security it supports. And uh, as I told you, SOAP support WS uh, DL, that is uh, WS security levels, right? Next, we have a contract um, here in the rest. WS contract does not re, uh, required, but in the SOAP, it is required. It is must. Uh, we, if we talk about the real life use cases of REST API, uh, it it supports into a uh, web apps. Uh, means if I wanted to uh, integrate the mobile app or web app, then I will use a REST API. If I have a uh, I have a uh, enterprise application system like so SAP or any legacy system, then I will prefer a, a SOAP API. Now, uh, what are the integration options available in the Salesforce? So first, uh, uh, there are few integration options I would like to tell you. First is the REST API, next SOAP API, then we have Bulk API, then Streaming API, then CDP, uh, CDC, that is Chain Data Capture, then we have Platform Events and Apex Fallout. So these are the uh, integration options that are available into a uh, into a uh, Salesforce. Then uh, what is WSDLs uh, and how it is used in the Salesforce integration. So WSDL stands for Web Service Description Language. It is a XML based file that describes the functions, inputs, outputs of the SOAP web framework or web services. Salesforce actually generates the WSDL files for the Apex classes and standard APIs, right? It is it is sort of like a guidelines that Apex will give us uh, before uh, before integrating any SOAP API. Next is uh, what is the difference between enterprise WSDLs and partner WSDLs? So basically, WSDLs have a different different formats. One is of enterprise WSDLs, and second is a partner WSDLs. So uh, there are three things into a WSDLs. First is object binding. In the enterprise WSDLs, we have a strongly typed input uh, object binding. In the partner WSDLs, we have a loosely loosely uh, typed uh, binding. Then if you talk about the flexibility uh, in the enterprise WSDLs, the, it is less flexible, uh, less flexible compared to a partner uh, WSDL that is more flexible. If we talk about the use case, uh, use case for the WSDLs is uh, use case for the WSDLs is a fixed schema. And for dynamic partner, uh, for uh, for the partner WSDLs, it is uh, it is like uh, it is not a fixed schema that is given. Uh, next is what are the integration patterns in the Salesforce? So uh, there are few integration patterns and uh, what we can say best practices to integrate the Salesforce with the with the uh, additional server uh, or uh, external system. Uh, first is we must uh, re uh, we must have a remote process invocation 
then we have a batch data synchronization and the last is uh, we must have a ui based uh, data change and uh, data visualization also right these are some integration patterns or best practices right uh, we have a remote a remote process invocation that is uh, that is r and r that means uh, if we are we are going to give a, a request then it will it will be giving us a response okay uh, and we have uh, fire and forget fnf that means if we send the data no need to wait for the response uh, means server will automatically send the response okay so these are two uh, main integration patterns that are available. Uh, next, we have a describe uh, different types of integration patterns available. So basically there are different types of pattern. Uh, this is the sub question for this question only, right? We have R and R that is uh, if Salesforce sends the request and waits for the response that is called as remote process invocation R and R. Then we have uh, uh, fire and forget that is FNF. Uh, FNF means Salesforce sends a data and uh, we will not wait for the response. Then we have a batch data synchronization. It is a periodic sync of the both the data into both directions, right? And then we have a data visualization. Data remains in the external system, but it, it can be accessed by the Salesforce. Uh, that is, it is a one of the example for it is a external relationship and we have a ui uh, ui update based on the data changes that means we actually uh, we actually notify the external system uh, about the data change into a salesforce so these are few integration patterns available next we have uh, next we have a, a remote site setting right very simple right what are the remote site setting and why why they are important so basically uh, remote site setting allows the salesforce to make a inbound calls http and https request to the external services actually we i we add the remote sites uh, into a salesforce setup right that could be accessible from the sales, uh, salesforce Salesforce blocks out uh, the untrusted domains unless and until we add them into a remote site setting. So if we are calling the external server from the Salesforce, then we must add that server location into a remote site setting. Next, we have a, what is the connected app? Very important, connected app allows external application to connect to the Salesforce securely using the standard protocol like auth, right? they actually use or to just uh, connect the external app right that can be uh, that can be accessible within the salesforce next what is OAuth and how does it works in the salesforce integration so basically OAuth is an open authorization uh, is an industry standards uh, protocol that is used in the multiple integration it allows application to access the salesforce data without a strong credential it uses a token for access and the refresh uh, and supports the multiple flaws like JWT token, web services, and username and password. So OAuth is basically a, a most used and trusted methodology to get a authorization for the external system. Okay, what is the difference between OAuth 2.0 authorization flow in the, uh, uh, sorry, what are the different, different OAuth uh, 2.0 authorization flows available in Salesforce. So basically, uh, we have uh, we have I think four right. I am remembering the four right now. First is web server flow. That is, it is a server side app with direct client secret. Next, it is a user agent flow uh, for the browser based apps. Uh, no client secret key will be there. And next is the JWT barrier flow bearer flow uh, it is used in the po uh, postman mostly uh, for the server to server uh, or without user interaction and then we have a username flow that is it is trusted using the stored uh, user creds like uh, like username and password okay so majorly we don't use username and password flow we use web servers then user agent and jwt bearer okay Next, what are the JWT flow in the Salesforce? 
So basically, JWT stands for JSON Web Tokens Flow. Uh, it is used in server-to-server -server integration with the no user interaction. The external app that signs in with uh, with JWT it has its own private key and uh, Salesforce verifies that private key and gives a uh, gives a uh, access token or returns the access token. So this is the JWT. It is most widely used uh, flow into a integration overall into an industry. Next, uh, what is the uh, next is what is the uh, what is the web server uh, flow? So web server flow is actually uh, actually uh, user uh, means it is uh, it is sort of like used for the web uh, application. Uh, it invokes uh, the user logs into uh, into Salesforce login means uh, it, it user will log in a uh, login via Salesforce login page. Authorized uh, authorization code will be uh, will be sent as a callback URL and uh, automatically uh, that user will get a uh, authentication. Right. So this is the you know, web server uh, web server flow in the Salesforce. Next is what is the name credentials, right? What is name credentials? Name credentials are actually uh, are actually specifically authentication and endpoint management tool uh, for the callout. Uh, we define the URL inside that. We use a authentication type and then we manage the token by using token management, right? It actually uh, it actually used to manage the endpoint. For the callouts. Next, what is the CDP? Uh, CDC, sorry, not a P, CDC. Uh, it is a chain data capture in Salesforce. Uh, chain data capture means CDC is a streaming API feature that tracks the changes, insert, update, delete, means on any insert, update, or delete, it, it actually tracks the changes and uh, into a Salesforce rec record, obviously, right? Uh, it actually extra it actually allows external system can subscribe to this change event right and by using change data capture means once a data into a salesforce change right it will it will get a uh, it, we can we can actually uh, uh, notify the external system uh, by using cdp okay last is what is salesforce connect and when it should be used right so it is it is also a most asked question salesforce connects allow the real time data access for external system without copying data into a salesforce it uses external objects mapped in the data yeah, one of the example is uh, the external relationship uh, we actually use middleware apis for uh, for actually uh, implementing the salesforce connect so these are some questions that have been asked in the last few weeks for all the Salesforce uh, integrations interview. Uh, now, if you want the answer key for this all question, I will attach the answer key into a description. If you are not able to find it into a description, just comment on the video. Our team, our team will just, uh, uh, just attach the link on your comment. So this is it guys. Thank you. Thank you so much.